in here and talk a little bit about Angular 2. Well, it's just, I gotta update the slide deck, it's just Angular now. Um, and I did actually update my live coding to Angular 4 last night just to see how it would work and it went smooth, which was nice. Um, as well as Firebase. And the reason why, so this is um, just a little bit of my adventures using Angular 2 over the last about six months or so while working on a side project that I was working on uh, called Doolist. And just a little bit of my experience as to why I switched over to Firebase. Um, essentially, the, the main reason was cost. Um, I had rolled up my own API and was storing stuff um, on an EC2 instance, and I kind of realized that I could just launch an Angular 2 app up to S3, point a domain at it, and store all my stuff in Firebase. It's basically very little cost. It took my server cost from you know just 15 bucks to like three or four bucks a month, which is really cool. Um, so just a little bit of background. It's a very simple presentation. Just gonna give you a quick brief overview and then jump in and do a little bit of live coding. So this is me. Um, I do have my Twitter handles on there if you want to connect or just Scott at Doolist. Um, I'm new to Raleigh as of the summer from Brooklyn. I spent about five years up there working on a number of different startups. Um, one in the event technology space, one in augmented reality, which is really cool to be a part of. Um, originally from Minneapolis. So work at Ziff Solutions right now, it's a marketing automation company, and then Doolist.io is the, the startup that I'm working on at night. It's a little bit of my side hustle. So just a little plug for Doolist. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build a productivity app because none of the other ones that I used actually worked for me. But the whole idea is that I'm trying to predict what I should be doing at any given time. So it's time aware, it's also gonna be eventually like location aware, so when you're at work, it'll show you work stuff. When you're at home, it'll show you personal stuff. So it's been kind of a fun project to work on. Um, if you wanna download it, there's a link to it there and I'll put it up at the end as well. Always looking for feedback um, for user input. So I'll just do a little bit of a quick overview. So why backend as a service? I kind of touched on this a little bit. The whole idea is to, you know, you have to invest a lot of time into building different products, um, but you want to make sure that you're building the right thing at the right time. Um, I do have a bit of a product management background, so that's where that kind of comes from. So I want to be able to validate ideas very quickly. So that's why I really love um, Angular with the CLI. If you haven't used it before, it's it's awesome. You can really get a you can scaffold up an app really quick, um, and then when you connect that with Firebase, you're able to have persistent persistent data. Um, in the back end as well. Um, I feel like most people probably know what Angular is. Um, some of the cool things about, so I've been using Angular 2 since the start, so it's you know front end framework, it's component based, uh, which I've really been loving, just kind of the component aspect, being able to like really um, group different, you know, both the view and the um, kind of the business logic all together. Um, in addition, I've also been using Ionic, Ionic 2 as well, which is, I'm not gonna to touch on it too much in this, but it's built on top of Angular 2, so I can actually just spit out a native iOS and Android app, which has been super helpful for my side project because it's just me, and I didn't have time to invest in learning both Swift and like Java to do Android development, so I'm able to, all in JavaScript, be able to do a native web app, and through Ionic, they're actually doing a lot of work with progressive web apps, um, so if you're interested in that space with service workers and all that kind of stuff, um, I've been playing around the last few weeks with it, and I've actually got it up and running where I can do some offline storage so I don't need to be connected um, using Ionic, which is, which is really awesome. So a little bit about Firebase. So Firebase um, is a service also provided by um, Google, and it gives you a number of different services that you can tap into. And you can kind of pick and choose what different services you want to use. So they do have an authentication service, um, as well as a database, a NoSQL style um, so service. You can store static assets um, and do analytics, and they have a few more things like push notifications um, as well. The one kind of cool thing with Firebra Firebase is that it is um, reactive data. So it allows you to connect via webhooks your data in a very, very simple way, so that if something gets updated on one, um, basically on one client, It'll get sent up to the database, into the into the cloud, basically, and sent back to all of the connected clients, which is super cool. Depending on your application, that reactive data you don't necessarily need for all sorts of applications. So you really want to pick and choose. Um, another talk that I want to put together eventually is kind of when I started running into some of the problems with it. Um, you know, you end up subscribing to a bunch of different data, and it updates really quickly, and it can easily kind of get 
start falling apart if you don't structure it properly. So now I'm just going to jump over and I'm going to do some live coding. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a really simple app. It's going to be just a way where you can store different events, different meetups. Um, we're going to store some data. We're going to do some authentication. So you're going to be able to log in and out. And then we're going to basically make it so you can only add events when you're logged in to it. So here's just the quick um, five-step process to get it up and running. I did start with um, a kind of a scaffolded up app already, just so I didn't have to go through some of the Angular specific stuff, so I could focus a little bit more just on how to get Firebase up and running. So what we've got here is we've got an Angular uh, 2 app up and running with a few components already added. So I've got a navbar component, um, a login page, an events list, a card that'll store the events, and as well as just an add events page. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to just go ahead and install a couple of dependencies. So the cool thing with Firebase, um, because both Firebase and Angular are Google products, they actually work really well together. Um, and there's a library called Angular Fire 2, which I'll be using, and it basically wraps a lot of the um, different commands into observables. Um, and then you can use the power of observables within your app. So you've got Firebase connecting real time to the database, and then you've got the observables, which are updating your uh, view, li view live. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Angular Fire 2. So we're just gonna add in our two dependencies into here and get those set up. And then once those are in, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just going to connect in our app.module. So I've already got just a few things already set up in here. So I'm just using the Angular router to just do a couple of quick routes um, between the different items up here. Let me also just get this set up. So we just got a list page and a login page. So you can see it's already set up here. Maybe we just switch back and forth between um, the two pages. So the first thing you need to do is to import it into your app. So in order to do that, you just need a few different items here. Get back over to my module. So what we're going to import in is just the initial, um, the Firebase module. And then if you want to use the authentication, there's a few additional um, items. It's a little broken there. They need to provide. So Firebase provides you a number of different authentication providers right out of the box that you set up in the console. So you have about six different methods. You can just use a basic email and password. You can also do Google OAuth, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, um, and an anonymous login as well. And the way in which you configure those, so getting it set up to start, all you need to do is just set up your configuration settings. And you just create an object that has your various keys within it. If you want to utilize um, some of the other services, you can. Um, you can also put it in a storage bucket. If you're using the push messages, um, you can add those in. But we're just going to be using some of the basic settings, so we don't need everything set up in there. And then, because we're also using the authentication setup, we need to set up our or auth configuration. So this is where you can start setting a few specific things. So what this is basically doing is it's setting up like the default um, provider that we want to use. So right now it's just using the password, but you can easily access you know, Google. And now we're going to be using Google login for the authentication whenever we call the actual function later on within our app. So I'm just going to use the password function here. And then to actually get it up and running, we need to inject it into our app. And we do that in our imports module. And in order to do that, we just pulled in this bit of code. And we pass in um, our two properties that we set above. So our Firebase config, as well as our authentication config. This authentication is optional. So if you just want to use the real-time database, you can just pass that in. OK, so I'm just going to save that. And come over here and make sure that we just didn't break anything. Cool. 
everything's all working. So we initiated the app. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the user authentication. Pull up my cheat sheet here and jump into our login component. So our login component just has a couple of quick functions already um, set up on it. So we've just got a login and a create an account function. And each of those are connected just to the different screens. So when we want to sign in, this just calls login. Request an account, that sets up our account. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an account. So we need to import in our, our libraries. So we're going to enter, import in Angular Fire. And then you also need to just add it into the constructor so you have access to it in the app. And now that we have access to it, to create an account, it's just as simple as accessing the library. And you've just got two basic um, functions on here. So you've got authentication in your database. So if we want to pull in the authentication, uh, on the auth object, you've got a number of different functions. Uh, on here, you've got your login, log out, and you've also got a create user. So to create a user, all you do is you pass in an object with the email, so this dot email, and I've already gone ahead and set a couple of properties on here that are just bound to the input properties on on the form as well using just an ng mo model on here. So each of the forms are just connected. And then you also just pass in the password, this dot password. And there we go, we've basically, we've created an account. And what this does, how Angular, or how Firebase works, is that it allows you, the authentication, authentication service um, stores just basic information about, about the user. So it's just gonna store their email address, and it's gonna return you um, the, the unique ID for that user. If you want to store additional information about that user, you know, settings, account settings, their first name, last name, those sort of things, um, you can actually, what, I, what they suggested and what after some research is, they said basically create a database object and just store all of your settings on there. So that's what we're going to do with, once we get this, a successful return. So on the create user, what it does is it just returns a promise. So you can then act upon that promise. Um, and it returns what I just call the auth object. It's just a um, our object that gives us a little bit of additional information if it's successful. We also want to just make sure that we catch any errors that come out of it. So if an error happens, we're just going to console log it out. Oops. So jumping back up here, so if it's successful, we're going to get this auth object back. So let's log it out and just so we can take a look at it when it comes back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the, the user object in the database. So now we're going to go in. So we've gone and we've created the user. It's returned us an auth object that's going to have a unique ID on it. Now we're going to access the database. So this is going to store... Um, the information in a NoSQL style. And you can actually just, what it does is once it's up in Firebase, it gives you just kind of a, a unique path where you can actually act upon any of the records in the database directly. So I have a little bit of um, a data model set up from when I was setting it up. So we've got, just close this out here. So we've got a set of meetups, and each of these meetups have a few different you know fields associated with them. So what I can do is, by um, just referencing meetup and then a unique ID here, we can actually update all of these fields. So all I need to do is just go in and we're gonna access, you can either access a list or an object. So a list lets you work on kind of like an array-like object of all of the different um, objects in a specific record. So we're gonna access a specific object in meetup and then we're gonna pass it in our auth object and it has a unique a UID on it. And then we're going to update that with a couple properties.
properties. So we're going to set an email, this.email. And then we're also just going to set an ID. And we're going to set that to our auth object UID. And then once that's done, we can move on. And then we also want to just make sure that we catch the error in case anything happens when we actually try to set, set the record. Okay, so we're not going to do anything yet. We're going to go and we're just going to do a test to make sure that this is all working. So right now you can see that there's no users created and we have no user in the database. So now if we come over, log in, request an account. Oh. Need it? Yeah, that's all right. Does Firebase do any validation on that? Um, on the email address? Um, it does kick back <coughs> an error um, if it is an incorrect email on there. So what we can see is this returned our, this is our auth object. <coughs> So it just gives you a number of different information. If you really want to dig into um, what the specific properties are that um, the Firebase, uh, Firebase has it pretty well documented. But the important one that I always pull is the auth, um, is the UID. So you can now see that we've got a uh, user created, and within the database, we've oh I added it to the wrong place. That should have been it added it to Meetup. But what we actually wanted to do, <laughs> we wanted to add that to user. So if we go in, we're just going to go ahead and delete this, clean this up, and delete this account. Now when we go through, request an account. So now I've got that auth object returned, it's set up in here. Now we've got our users record and we've got our user. So now you can go ahead and access this at any time by just referencing the unique ID on there. Um, and then once we're successful, we're just going to do window.location. <coughs> we're just going to go to our home page once it's successful. So that is dealing with the, the authentication. And now, and you can see the one thing that is nice about Firebase is it does provide some good um, validation as you we were talking about. So if I request an, a new account, it's going to give me back an error, and it's going to tell me that this email is already in use, which is great. Or um, I think, yeah, in here as well. So it's saying I've got an invalid email. So it does some basic checking, which is nice. Now let's go ahead and just set up the login function. It's really easy to log a user in. So on our login function, we're just going to call this .af. We're going to access that auth again. We're just going to call login. And we're going to pass that same object of our email, this.email. And password is this.password. And then once we have done that, we are, just do a quick So now once we come over here, let it recompile. So now we are logged in. So now that we are logged in, we can actually do some stuff with that. So next thing that we're going to do is, um, so still doing setting up the authentication, but we're going to jump over into our navigation, and we're going to act on that uh, user. So what we're going to do is we're going to import in Firebase again because we're using this in another, in a different component. Import in. OK, 
Okay, and then we're going to add it to our constructor. And what we're going to do is when this component gets um, uh, built up, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to access the auth. And just jump over to Melody. <coughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to subscribe to the auth object. And what, the, what that's going to do is if, if there is a user logged in, it's going to return that auth object. And then what we're going to do with that is we're just going to assign that to the user, to a user variable. And then in the navigation code here, basically what I'm doing is just doing some poor man's um, user auth and, and access control. So I'm just hiding and showing the, the add button um, if there is a user present, if there's not a user. And then also I'm just showing um, the login versus logout button on if the user is present or not. So we've got a user present, we go out, so now we've got log out and we can add events here. Now if we log out, we've got to do the log out function first. So to log out it's just as straightforward, auth, and we just call it log out. And there we go, and now we switch it. Now we lose access to the button on the top. And then if we log back in here, test. Now we've got access to those buttons at the top. So that's just doing the authentication. Now we're going to get into just the database. And to do that, we are going to jump into our add event component. So what I've done already is I've just gone and mapped the different uh, input properties of this form to um, an object which we're going to pass in. So to create an event like we did with the user, we're just going to go ahead and access, got to import in Firebase first. Add it to our constructor here. Now that we've got access to it, we can just go into the database. And this time we're going to access the list. So the, the list that we're going to access is we're going to access that list of meetups. So what we can do is we can now act upon this list. So there's a number of different once we establish the, the path for which it's at, we've now got a number of different operators on it. So we can push new events, um, we can subscribe to it and get it and get returned the full list of events. So what we're going to do with this one is we're just going to push a new event. And we're just going to pass it in our event object, which has you know our different settings here. And then once that's successful, we have added an event. So now if we go back to our database here, we're just going to go test event, test date, description, and I'm just going to pull a URL that I used before. And then we submit that event, and you can see that we've got a new event added into our database. Now we're going to jump over into the list, and we're going to actually pull down all that information. So jumping over into the event list, we're going to one last time here, import in AngularFire. to the constructor. And then as we're building this component, 
we're going to go ahead and subscribe to our list of meetups. So what this is doing is it's wrapping this into an observable so you can, when you subscribe to it, every time that something changes um, in with any of the events, it will automatically fire off this event and we'll get a new list of events. And what we're going to do is we're just going to assign them to our events variable. And then we're going to go through and display them on our list of events. We just call it meetup. Yeah. So there we go. So now we have access to all of our different events that are in the, in the database here. And the cool thing about Firebase is that if you act upon these different events, you can see the updates in real time. So if we just go ahead and delete this, boom, it updates right in the app. You can go through and change the date of this one. We're going to say we're going to change it up to the 6th, and it updates instantly in the app, which is really cool. Um, the That's really powerful. There's only some cases where you want, where that's going to be necessary to have that you know real-time data back and forth. Um, the one thing is, when I started building um, do list, as you start doing this, it's really easy to just subscribe to, you know, the various events um, wherever you start pulling in data. But then what happens is that anytime anything changes, it's going to fire off again. So if you're doing numerous updates, it gets very, very confusing because you start ending, you start firing all these events over and over and over again. So that is it for me. Glad to take any questions. We're done on time. Oh yeah. 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 Sorry. I was wondering whether you can adapt this to an ontology, such as an event. You may have a particular set of type of events that have certain attributes, and you can just read off from the ontology what what the attributes are, whether you know they're start and stop or start and duration or um, changes in location or are, are sensitive for some change or something? Um, I'm sure you could, could. I don't have too much familiarity with that, doing that specific thing, so I'm not. Um, it was talking about anthology. Sorry, what's that? Anthologies. Just Anthologies. Sort of a scheme for description, I noticed that you know an awful lot about what you're looking for in meetup events, and that might not be the same for. In terms of like pulling down different like yeah, subsets of data or. Um, the one thing with uh, Firebase is that it is pretty limited in terms of the types of queries that you can do. Um, you can go through and like index and like just pull down and subscribe to specific events to it. Um, if you do, what you can do, and hopefully this kind of gets at your point a little bit, is that um, you can actually go in and subscribe to any particular part of this. So you can go in and say, I want to subscribe to Meetup, this specific ID, and this specific value. And then you can just subscribe to all of those different items um, as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, you subscribe to a list in the instructor in the way you do. Um, when you uh, navigate back and forth to one of the pages, are you Resubscribing over time is that an issue? So. Yeah, so that's kind of what I was touching at, at the end where it gets a little hairy is that you want to be very smart about how you subscribe to different things because you also want to, when you um, are dealing with different components, when you break down the component, you want to make sure that you're also unsubscribing to the event. Um, if you don't, it does say stay, stay subscribed, and eventually it's going to catch up to you if you subscribe to a ton of different things. Um, in there. The way that you, you know, you should do this with um, Angular 
and how I've actually built it in the app is you actually pull all of this out into like service providers. So you're just dealing with your data in one service, and then what you're actually doing is you're, sent, is you're using that data in the app itself. Um, and I did some interesting things where I was actually using um, just some, some subjects and some observables to actually just fire off other events within the app when data changed specifically. So I would have a service, and then you know if a specific subset of data changed, I would fire off a specific event, which, fi which updated it in one area of the app, but maybe not the other. So um, our first uh, speaker talked about scalability, and I just wondered, if, if, how is your familiarity with understanding Firebase's scalability? Well, from my understanding, you can, you can scale quite large. Um, it does have a price point attached to it as well. Um, I think one of the first limitations, potentially, is they do have a, a 100 simultaneous connection uh, limit. Um, you know, I have about you know 2,000 users in like Do List right now, and I haven't come close to hitting that. But it's something that I do think about because productivity app people are going to be in it quite often, so I might be hitting that soon. Um, and if that's the case, by the time I get there, I'm probably going to start thinking about going back to kind of rolling my own API okay. at that point. You know, this is. Have you looked at this uh, Flame and Blaze um, plans, and one looks customizable and you pay per widget, and the other has uh, fixed limits on it? Yeah, I've looked at them. I haven't gotten to the point where I've had to do the math to see what's what's going to be cheaper. Um, the only math that I've basically done is that using Firebase was cheaper than setting up my own um, instance as well. It's also a lot easier. Um, that is a that would be a challenge. So you are you are connecting to the Firebase service. So the question was, you know, developing when you don't have internet. Um, I don't really have an answer to that. The cool thing when you're talking about offline um, access with Firebase, though, is that it does actually um, store some of those um, requests and that those things back and forth while you're temporarily offline. Um, for a while, Firebase was saying that it gives you offline support where it like, queues it up and it'll send it after the fact. They've kind of backed away from that a little bit, and they're like, it's if you have a spotty disconnect. So if you're on your phone and you like go through a tunnel and you lose connection for five to 10 seconds, uh, once you reconnect, it'll actually retry and resend that data up. Yeah, in the back. I was wondering if that Angular Fire component is um, somehow like extracting um, like an auth interceptor, so that the token is kind of abstracted away from the um, authorship process of the code. Because I was wondering, like, where's the token? Where's the token? That's what I was like, what's the impact of that? Yeah, you know, I haven't actually dug into it too much. You know, I've kind of taken um, the mentality of just figuring it out as I go. So it works out of the box, which is great. Um, it does store store it locally, um, and it does have a token which it stores um, in. Let me just pull it up here. I saw in the auth chat um, the UUID, but I didn't know if that was a user. Or... <clears throat> so that UID was specific to um, the user, and that does match what is in. You know, that's the UID that's here, which is what was stored from here. Um, jumping back over. Um, sections. Yeah, it was in the local storage. So it does store um, some stuff up here in the local storage as well. And you can kind of see some of when I was talking before about the limitations of what you can store on that actual auth object um, in like this panel here, Firebase does give you access, and you can kind of see in here. You know, you can send up a display name, a photo URL, and a couple other variables on there, um, specifically on the auth object as well. <laughs>